The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Getting Started with Convertry webinar. I'm just going to let people trickle in for a second. Um, so my name is Honor, and I am a support staff at Convertry. I'll tell you a bit more about myself in a second. But first, can people just drop in the chat or in a question just that they can see me? Um, see me? Hear me, sorry. So that you guys can hear me loud and clear. Um, the the webinar is going to be quite useless if you can't. So yeah, just in the chat or in the questions, just say, yep, I can hear you. Cool, I've got a yes already, thank you. That is good to know. Yep, you can all hear me. Good, good, good. That is always a start. So I'm going to start talking and people can come in. We'll get moving kind of in the first five minutes. So as I said, my name is Honor and I'm a member of Convertry support staff. Um, I operate the emails, so you might have seen my name there. I'm in the Facebook group. And if you've ever watched any of our help videos, there's a good chance you've already heard my voice before. Um, if you want to know what I look like, that is to put a face to my name, that is me, on our company website. And I've been with Convertry a little while now, and I do the webinars, which is a lot of fun. This webinar is going to cover how to get a landing page created with a thank you page connected to it. We're then going to do some editor tips and tricks to make the most out of Convertry. And I would say that the first time I watched this webinar, even after having watched Convertry for a while, the tips and tricks really, really changed how I used it. So I would advise sticking around for that. Then I'm going to show you the feature release that we had this week. Every week we update with new features, new ideas. These are all kind of voted for by our members. Um, there's no point building anything that you guys don't want. So I'll show you what we released this week and then I will open the floor up because I'm sure that you guys have questions about Convertry um, that you want answered. If you do have any questions about what I'm doing along the way, drop in and say, can you repeat that? Why exactly are you doing that? Can you do it slower? Can you do it faster? I can do all of that. If you have a more specific question, let's say it's domain related or just something that I'm not currently doing, you can drop it in the chat if you wish or you can on the questions box if you wish or you can save it and I will get to that question. Um, I'm not going to cut you off at the end. It's open ended time limit on answering questions and showing you guys. But in terms of just not disrupting the flow of the of what I'm presenting, um, I probably won't answer that at the time. But don't be, don't hesitate to just say, oh, no, that didn't really make sense to me. And I will go back and do it again. This is so that you guys really get a sense of what I'm doing. And I don't want anyone to feel lost. So before I get started, how familiar do you guys feel with Convertry? If one is like, oh, I joined Convertry yesterday. I've literally never seen it. And 10 is, I could do this webinar on her. Where do you guys think you're at? Just drop in the questions box between a one and a 10. Where do you think that you're at with Convertry? OK, we've got a couple coming in here, a six. That's pretty good, actually, David. Um, that's a, maybe a bit higher than we would expect. So David's going to be helping me out, it seems here. A couple of lower numbers, like threes and fours. So you guys have had a good nose around. You've got stuff moving and you just want to see what's going on. Sounds right to me. Um, cool that we've got a kind of spread here it helps because there's lots of little things along the way that maybe you're doing really well with Convertry, but you've just, you just didn't know that we did that or you didn't know about that little trick. So I think that there is no one who would attend this webinar that would not take something away from it. Cool. So we're about ready to get kick started, really. Yeah, we've got a couple ones coming in as well here. It's no worry, guys. By the end, that one is going to be a lot higher, I promise you. Um, you can do this alongside with me. I know some people do, but there will be a replay of this available very, very quickly after the webinar, as quickly as I can make it happen. Um, so don't feel pressured to follow along with me and, you know, that you can't get it. Sit back and enjoy it now. And then in the future, you can do this yourself and um, go a bit slower, go a bit faster, skip through the bits you already know, etc, etc. So. By the end of this webinar, I will have built this demo page here. This is my example. This is the template I kind of work from in my mind. I will have built this from scratch. And what it will do is collect a user's name and their email address. When they click this button here, 
they'll be taken to a thank you page that I'm going to show you guys how to make and I'm going to deliver them um, my guide that I'm advertising here. So this is how to get your first funnel, your first kind of provisional little funnel going with Convertry. My pages won't look identical to this because obviously I'm designing it from scratch, but I think it's going to be a pretty close match. So let's get started. I'm in a funnel right now. I just made a um, one from scratch and I named it webinar and now I need a page. So I am going to click new page in the right corner. When you do this, all of Convertry's templates are going to pop up and we could be here for a while looking at those. They're a super useful tool inside Convertry and a lot of users have a lot of fun with our templates. But the sake of today, we're going to start from a blank slate because if we can work our way up from a blank slate, then templates are going to be a piece of cake. So I'm going to click the blue create a page from scratch button. If you wanted one of these templates, you would just scroll and then click select on one of them. But I'm going to create a page from scratch. And I've got to name it something right. So I'll just name it webinar lead page. Does what it says on the tin there and press OK. So now this little blank page has been placed inside of our funnel and I'm ready to start making this look just like that demo page, my aim, my goal. So I'm going to click edit page over the page card here. That's what this is called, the page card, because it looks like a little card. And we're just going to hover over and click edit page. When we do this, we will be taken to the page builder which is where most of the magic happens. So if this was a template, you'd see all of the elements from the template already on the page. But since we are going from a blank slate, it is just white screen and ready for us to play with. So you may have seen in that demo page that I just showed you, I had a big image of a woman as my background. And as it's my background, I'm gonna put that on first and then build the elements on top of it because that makes the most sense to me. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an image to the page. I'm going to do this by going to our elements tray. This is where all your elements on the page will come from. When you hover over, you get the names of them and some of them accordion out into more options there. So we'll get to that in a second. But I want an image, so I'm going to click on the image icon here. Up is going to pop my all the images inside my whole Convertry account. And trust me, there are quite a few. You'd be disappointed if I wasn't using Convertry all the time, right? And what you will have is this little thing here that says search Pixabay. Pixabay has an API integration with us, which means that you can get all of Pixabay's free, like royalty free images as you can use them on your page with no worries um, directly inside. You don't need to go on their website, download it, re-upload it we can just pop a Pixabay image on the page and we are away. So does someone want to give me something to search into this Pixabay image search? Something that you think Pixabay might have an image of. Last time I did this webinar, someone said cookie, which made me really hungry. But what do you guys want to see an image of searched up just to see what it's like? David has said cute puppies. I'm with David on that one, to be honest. It's almost beaten the biscuit. So. I've typed in puppies. Uh, I hope you're not disappointed, David. I think that's quite a good selection. Up has come a just loads of photos that you can scroll through and see suit your page. Like if you had a darker background or a lighter background, you could click next and keep perusing through. So we've got all of these images. And if we wanted to add these to the page, let's say these were our favorite puppies. We we'll just click on them and then click select and it's going to go right on your page. Now, as much as I would love to put the photos of those cute puppies on my page, I'm actually not going to. And there is a reason for this. So each Pixabay image shows you its resolution. And to be honest, this resolution is pretty high. So it's 1920 pixels by 1280. It's not too shabby. Like this is going to look fine on your page. But if you remember, my demo page had this massive image on the back of it, and I want that to be super, super high quality. This is the cap that Pixabay has for how large the images can be through the API integration. It's just how it works. And so this would work fine on the page. If I put it on, it would not be blurry by any means. But I want my landing page to be absolutely perfect, so I'm going to use a high-resolution image. So I'm going to go back to my home folder 
I'm going to find there is my image. This is one I uploaded earlier. You can do that by clicking the upload button and like searching through your computer. Or if you had this image on your desktop, you would literally just drag it into the box and it would appear, which is super quick and easy. Looking at this image, you can see that this resolution is so much higher. Where the other one was 1,980, this one is 5,184. So this is a high, high, high resolution image. But that is not going to affect your landing page speed at all. Convertree can handle that kind of resolution. And we're going to see that at the end of the webinar when I show you my working page. So I'm happy with this image. Sadly, it's not the puppies, but it's a close second. So I'm going to click Select. My image is now on my page looking really good, but it's not looking like a background, right? I need it to cover the whole of the screen. And there's a couple of ways of doing this. Um, Convertry's freeform editor means that you can use drag handles, kind of like if you were resizing images on, let's say, PowerPoint or something. But I, would, I want to be sure that I'm covering the whole of the background and I don't want there to be a little corner of white space. I'm a perfectionist when it comes to building my pages. So I'm actually going to use our full width tool to make this just fit to the sides of the screen and then I can just pull it down. To do this, I'm going to make sure that I have selected the element. I can tell I have because there's a little blue snap lines around it. And then I'm going to go up to our quick actions toolbar. This is a place of magic and we will be using it throughout the webinar again and again. We are going to click on the icon that looks like two little arrows pointing outwards that says full width. And there we go. It has filled to my screen without me having to fiddle around. I am lazy. There's going to be a lot of shortcuts in this webinar. And I think that you guys will appreciate that too, because who wants to spend extra time? So now I'm ready to drag this up to the top and just pull it down a little so I can kind of see the whole image. That'll fill a page. Feeling pretty good about that as a background element. So that's done and dusted. The next thing I'm going to do is put header and footer on my page. None of this is a done and done guide. You'll build your pages exactly how you want to, and that is completely fine. But I like to put a little header and footer on my page. My footer is going to hold a privacy policy. Um, and my header is maybe it's just an aesthetic thing for me. I think it makes it look more professional. So I'm going to do this by adding a panel to the page and then gently editing it to fit my needs. So I'm going to go back to the elements tray where I got the image before and I'm going to go two down to where it says panel. It's just a square because when you click on it, you just get a square. So this is a panel and we're going to use them a couple times in this webinar. They are also things of magic and very, very useful. I'm going to use the full width tool on this again because just as the same as the image fills the background, I want my header to fill the top section. I'm going to drag this up by just holding it and dragging upwards. And I think I'm going to make this a bit smaller because that's quite a big header and I'm not actually putting any information in it. So I'm just going to use the drag handle. Kind of fit that a bit more to the top. Cool. So I've got a header on my page. I like my header. Um, but the one thing I don't like about it is the color. In the demo page, it was kind of a sandy yellow, and I thought that actually quite went quite well with the page. I'm no designer, but I want that color back. So if you ever want to change the background color of an element, it is very, very easy. All you need to do is make sure the element is selected with those blue snap lines. Go to Element Properties, Background. And there'll be a couple of different options, but we're going to open the color picker, right, to find me that sandy color. So this here will always show like the color that the panel normally is, and it'll automatically be that kind of off-white gray. Hover over this, it will say open color picker, and up pops my color picker, which is where I'm going to find my sandy color. The great thing about Convertry's color picker is that there is no guesswork involved. You don't have to click a color and then click out to see what, oh, does that match? This does it live. So as I'm dragging this around, the color is being changed live, which is very, very useful for really seeing exactly what's happening on your page. So I'm going to see if I can get that, um, that kind of sandy color. So I'm just going to pull the color picker up to a kind of a yellowy tone. I'm just going to hmm, drag it around. I'm going to go with there. It's a bit more orangey than I normally go. I quite like it. 
As I was dragging this, this RGB value will have been changing. This is an exact value which reflects this color. So if I drag it a little bit more, those numbers change. This means that you never have to lose a color. So if I decide this is my color, this is my brand, I want this color on all my pages, it's totally fine. All you have to do is either copy and paste this or just put it on a little post-it note, it's what I do. And then just type this value into the color picker of what other element you want to be that color and voila, it will be that color. So you can keep consistent branding and things like that across pages and never lose your favorite color. So I've had a mess around with that. I've picked that color. I'm not gonna write the RGB value down for now, but I'm ready to do some other editing. So I'm gonna click select and the color has stayed and I have a header. On the demo page, I also had a footer and it looked identical to the header. This is the point where I could either put another panel on the page, kind of guess the size of that one. That was that to be where I'd copy and paste the RGB value, but I don't need to because Convertry has a clone tool that means I can just make an exact copy of this and put it as a footer. This is a quite a good way then of keeping consistency without having to put too much effort in. So when the element is selected, blue snap lines, just click our clone button on the top right hand side of that quick actions toolbar. And now there is two. So I now have a footer that I can drag down my page. And now it's all nicely sandwiched in and it's starting to look a bit more professional, it's starting to look a bit more like that demo page. But the main thing that demo page had, probably the thing that a lot of people are here for, is that form. So we're going to build that form out where we capture that all important email address and name and start building our lists. So I'm gonna use a panel again to act as the holder for all of the elements. You can see here on my demo page, this is the panel. So I'm just gonna go back to my elements tray again and pull this panel onto the page. I'm gonna do a bit of rough resizing. I can always kind of do it later. Kind of put it there. It's always a bit of guesstimation, but I quite like it there make it a bit longer. And now I'm going to pop in all the text that I want in there. So you might have to bear with me and hear me typing away, but feel free at this point to pop in any questions that you've had so far while I'm typing. It's a good moment to think about what I am saying. So there is my heading. I'm going to add another chunk of text by going to my elements tray and then dragging the text element down. And I'm going to do, this is the salesy bit where I tell them what you get if you sign up for my guide that you get if you give me your email address. I'm sure that you guys would have all had your text ready, but you can edit and type right into Convertry and I will show you in a second how we can change the text style of this. So you might not get to keep the text style from your copying and pasting, but we have all of the options to make it just the way you want it to look. We'll leave it there. I like that. So that's all about my seven top tips. I'm going to add another text element and ask them to enter their details. I want to make it nice and clear exactly what we're going for here. Then I'm going to leave a little gap where I'm going to put, you know, those boxes and the submit button. And I'm going to do a final little text element. This is similar to the header and footer. It's just personal preference, but I'm going to put a little spam message. Never go. Ahead. 
So that's up to you. But I just think that it it helps to reassure someone like it's my primary concern when I give someone my email address, right, that I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning with 20 emails in my inbox that aren't related at all. So just not a nice little professional thing. I'm only going to use my email, your email address for what I say that I am. Cool. My text is all looking good there. But like I said before, this isn't this is just ConvertU's automatic style. And maybe it's your thing, but I'm going to change some of the fonts. I'm going to make it look a bit more me. So there are two ways of doing this. The first would be simply to click inside the text element you wish to edit. And you've got like the font types here, the sizing, colors, your normal kind of bold italics, underline, all of that jazz. Or we can do what I'm going to do, which is change the default text styles for a whole page. This is super useful because you can choose one font, one color, one size, and have it applied to a load of text boxes at once without highlighting text. And then your text looks a little bit funny because one box was size 17 and one box was size 18. It just removes that. And it's a great way of keeping brand consistency. So to add a default text style to a page to edit this text, I'm going to go on the page button in the top, top toolbar. And I'm going to click default text styles, which is my second option. So I get to set three default text styles if we ignore the hyperlink, which is just how hyperlinks look. But these three look the same. So that is how my normal text will look, my paragraph text, my heading text and my second heading text. As I edit this, I would keep an eye on this little spam message here, because if you look real close, you'll see that it changes live, just like the color picker. So it's a good way, again, of being saying, oh, that fuck on isn't actually what I wanted at all. So I'm going to change this to my favorite font, Leto. I'm all right with the color. I'm all right with the weight. I'm going to up the line spacing a little bit. I want it to be really easy to read because there's not much too much text on my page. And I'm also just going to change the default font scaling on mobile here. So ConvertU automatically scales your font 150% for mobile. This is because mobile screens are smaller. If we showed the same size font, you'd have people zooming into your page thinking, I cannot read a shred of that. So it's pretty standard practice. We go at 150%. But you might say, mm, that's not going to be right for me, which is what I'm going to do. I'm only going to set my paragraph text to scale at 125% of the original font size. So if you're really worried about that, it's probably great to set the default text styles, have a look at your page on mobile, set them again, have another look think see what works for you right so that's my paragraph text my heading text is going to be a little bit different I've got a different font that I like for that the bold weight is good for me kind of automatic for a header but size 36 is a bit too massive for me so I'm going to change that to 24 happy with the line spacing I'm going to change my default font scaling again just 140 percent so the the title will be a bit bigger on mobile it's the main thing that people are on my page for. If it's the thing that jumps out of them, I'm pretty happy with that. So that's all looking good to me. So I'm going to click done. And this text has changed. It is now Leto in the color that I set it, which is ah, just so easy. But you may notice that my heading hasn't taken the heading text. And that's because ConvertTree is great, but it's not a mind reader. It doesn't know that this text element I added to a page is the heading, right? So I'm going to highlight the text and I'm going to go to more and you'll see here that these are the default text styles that you set up. So everything's set to paragraph right now. But if I click H1, it's now set to my heading style. So that is looking good. I can close this. Just going to make my boxes a bit bigger. It's really starting to come together. I'm going to align all of these boxes a little bit better. So don't worry if they're looking a bit of a mess. It's all to come. So next thing I need to do is add the all important boxes where I take the information from my user. These need to be done as form elements. And we've got a little section for them in the elements tray. So click form elements. And you can capture whatever information you want. That is up to you. In this case, I'm just going to capture their name and their email so that when I send them an automatic email, I can personalize it a bit and say, hi, Gavin. Hi, whoever. Welcome to my mailing list. But the minimum thing you would need would be an email box so that you can contact them and a submit button so they can send it off to your autoresponder. So I'm going to use first name. I'm just going to drag it on. I'm going to use an email box. 
and I'm going to get a submit button. Cool, those are looking good. But you may notice if you're very, very eagle-eyed, I think I might not notice this, these aren't reflecting the default textiles that we have here. These aren't Leto, I think the Roboto is our automatic font, and I'm a stickler. I want these to be the same font. So for these two boxes here, I'm gonna to go to element properties like I did for the background. I'm gonna to go to input properties, and I kind of have like a little text edit here, right? And I want these to be Leto, just like my main text. I'm kind of, I'm happy with the color and the size, like that's all good with me. Then for my submit button, I'm gonna to go to button settings and I'm gonna make it the same font as the heading to kind of create this like, this connection between the two in their mind that this is important. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. This is the bit that's really like I want to stand out. And I'm also gonna change the label of submit to download now. Like that's what they, that's what happens if they, um, sign up to my mailing list, they get taken to a thank you page where they're going to get given this document. So that download now is a bit more urgent. It's a bit more clear than submit. I think it's on the, with that blue button, it's looking really good. I've got my elements all set up with the styles that I like and it's starting to come together. It's not a thing of beauty just yet, but I've definitely got what I need on the page. So now is time to make this look a little bit neater. And this panel here that I have used might look great aesthetically, but it's also actually serving a really important purpose. And that is grouping these elements together so that we can do a bit of alignment. This just makes our lives easier. You can see when I click in here that the pink snap lines come up for all these elements and like these aren't aligned basically. And I want them to be aligned but I don't want to really spend the time like painstakingly doing it what if I have to change it later and I have to do it all again well Convertry has alignment tools that does this for you and because of the panel acting as what we would call it a container um, we can align these all at once because they're inside the container and it's not going to affect like my header and footer elements for instance so click inside the panel so you can see your snap lines and I'm going to the top toolbar it's the one next to our full width button that we've used and if I use this little arrow drop down here, it's going to give us all of the alignment options for my container. So I can decide what I want to do. Do I want to do justification and all of that stuff? I think I'm going to be center aligning these. Oh, that looks so much better immediately. And then these are feeling like a bit weird. I just, what I'm going to do is hold down shift and select these four elements. And I just want to make sure the gaps between them are equal because that one is smaller looking than the one between the button. And like I said, stick clip of perfection. I want those all to be equally spaced. So I'm going to use the drop down arrow again. And this time I am going to distribute vertically. Cool. It was a little change, but it did my job for me. And I can now be in good faith that the space between those is all equal. That is really starting to look a lot more like what I was going for now. If I click off the container, you can see. It's a proper opt-in form. People can give me their information. But this panel, it's not cutting it for me. It's good, it's doing a job, but I don't think it looks that professional. It really does look like a square I just plopped on the page. So I'm gonna do two things to edit this panel. I'm gonna make it a bit more opaque and I'm gonna make its corners a bit rounded off. So it looks more like an element I purposefully designed for this page rather than a square I put on it. To do this, I'm gonna click back inside the panel so I can see it's blue snap lines. Go to the all important element properties and go to background. Exactly the same process as when we were changing the color of the background for the header and footer. But when I'm in this color picker, I want to ignore this beautiful rainbow to my left. And I am instead going to use this here. This will change live just like the colors. So if I pull this down, my box starts to get more and more see-through until I reduce it to nothing. So this is a great way of blending with your rest of your page. So I'm just going to drag it to about here. You can still read my text. I don't want to do it so you can't read my text by any means. David has asked about shadows and I will show you in a second about shadows. Yes. <laughs> yes is the answer to David's question. I'll show you guys in a second. So I'm happy with the opacity of this now. It's looking good. I'm going to click select. I have the same RGBA 
I have like an RGBA, just like I had an RGB value for the opacity so I can make multiple elements the same level of opacity. But I'm happy, I've dragged along. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna click select. You'll see here, David, um, I'm not gonna go into detail of it because I don't want to do it with this box, but if I click shadows, you can create a shadow on the element itself. Yeah, to make it pop out is what David said in his question and he is correct. This would make it kind of stand out, give it a bit more jazz, like what I'm saying with the opacity, just not make it look like it was just plopped there. So yes, you can, David, in element properties, there's a shadows button. The other thing I'm gonna do is not shadows to David's disappointment, probably, I'm gonna do borders. So I'm gonna make the radius more rounded at the edge of my corners. You could personalize this for each corner. So you could just make the bottom right one and the top left one, like the same level of rounded off. But I wanna do it for all four because it makes my life easier. So I want to go at about a 30. Yeah, 30 feels right to me today. You could go really severe, do like a 60, really, really tuck in those corners. I like a subtle 30. So that has brought in the radius of the element. It's better demonstrated if I click off it. And it looks a lot more professional, the opacity. That is making my design brain a lot happier. And you must be thinking at this point, Oh no, that's starting to look a lot like the demo page you showed me. You would be correct. We are very, very close to having this page at a point where we can check the mobile page, set up a thank you page, get a form linked and start collecting those leads. Before we do, there's one more thing I'm gonna add and that is a privacy policy. I mentioned this before and then I wanted to put it in the footer. Again, this is just me doing something that I would put on my page. Every single country has its own like GDPR and email collection guidelines. Make sure you know what you're doing and a privacy policy can, can be an integral part of that. So to do this, I am going to put a text element down into my footer. I'm gonna type the words privacy policy. And then when a user clicks on it, they'll be taken to this. In order to have them taken to my privacy policy, I will need to hyperlink this with a live page that I have. I'm not gonna show you guys me building a privacy policy today because I feel like that is not the webinar you signed on for and would be incredibly boring. Um, but you can look up some kind of generic ones. Today, I'm just gonna use like Convertry's company privacy policy to hyperlink to this. So what I'm gonna do is highlight this text and in that top toolbar where I had all the lovely editing from before, like making my text bold, I'm going to use the little chains here and I'm going to click on it and up will pop the hyperlink box. I'm just going to type in my hyperlink. Obviously, if you copy and paste this directly, it does... Um, eliminate a little bit of the risk of putting in the wrong link, but I have typed that enough times that you can trust me that that's the right link. Before I click save, I'm actually gonna to toggle on open in a new tab. So this means that when someone clicks that privacy policy, rather than the window they're currently on being taken to the link, a new tab will open, which means that this landing page will still be open on their computer. You'd be surprised how easily people are distracted or kind of can't even remember why they clicked on the privacy policy really, but you will lose leads, maybe a small amount, but it is likely you would lose leads if you didn't have it open in a new tab because they'll get distracted. Whereas if it opens in a new tab, they can peruse your privacy policy at their leisure when they want, but your page is still there reminding them, click me, download now. So that is my personal preference and recommendation to make sure that opens in a new tab. I'm happy with that privacy policy and I'm gonna click save. It's got that little underline on it, kind of as you would expect a privacy, um, a hyperlink to. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a universal hyperlink sign, isn't it? Um, and so now if a user clicks this, they'll be taken to Convertry's privacy policy. I'm going to highlight this text and center it to the element. And then I'm gonna center this to the page. That's bang on in the middle now. I'm pretty happy with that. I am feeling good. So, sorry guys, was a little pop up. So this is looking good and I am happy. So I'm just gonna check out the mobile page. Mobile is incredibly important to people these days, like more and more leads are coming from mobile and it's no point me making this page be absolutely beautiful if in the end of it, you can't see it on mobile. And Convertry allows you to edit your mobile page without affecting your desktop page, which is so great. 
So to have a look at what this looks like, click on this mobile icon in the top hand toolbar. And Convertry has given you kind of what it thinks that you've built. And to be honest, it does a pretty good job most of the time. It's got my privacy policy and my footer. It's got all my elements in the right place. My head is looking a bit chunky. Um, so I might edit that. And this is something you can do, as I can say, that won't affect the other page. So I can kind of pull this up, pull this in. And maybe I might decide that in this sense, I want this title more in the header. I could mess this around a bit. And I can do that. And after a minute, I realized that actually I kind of liked how Convertry built it before. That is completely fine. I can just click the Remobilize button, click Remobilize All, and it will once again say, hey, this is what I would have done if I was you. And it gives you that again. So you can mess around with it, do what you want. And then maybe at the end of it, think, mm, I'd rather keep it the way Convertry did it for now, for instance, completely fine. And nothing that we've done there has in any way affected this lovely mobile view that I built before. So my desktop looking, page is looking good. My mobile page is looking good. And the next thing from there would be the fact that I need to have a thank you page. I need to thank them for joining my seven top, seven, seven top tips for slimming without starving um, mailing list and give them the little guide that I promised them here in my explanation. So I'm going to click save on my page because I don't want to lose all the things I've just demonstrated to you. And then I'm going to go back to my funnel and build this thank you page. Now, this is kind of the same as when I cloned my header and footer. I could recreate a page with the same default text styles and copy across those RGB values, but actually I can clone that page and completely maintain the look and feel of this page, make a few tweaks, and that way my user, it's very clear to them that this was a set. Like these two pages go together, they look the same, and I didn't have to do too much time to do that. So on your page card, you have a three dot menu. Click this, click more. And the first option you get is clone. It's going to ask you for a name of your clone. If the first one was called webinar lead page, I think it's only right that this one is called webinar thank you page. Then I'm going to click clone. And just like that, we have a set of twins. So now I'm going to go in and just make this more like my thank you page. So this is going to involve, as I said, the delivery of a document. So on a button click, they'll be able to download my document. And a couple of little things will be different because they've signed on to my thank you. They've signed on to my um, webinar now, which is great, but it means that I don't need to give them the spiel, for instance, like they know what they signed up for. And I also don't need the elements that collect their information. So I'm going to get rid of these. Anything that I do on this page, it goes without saying, does not affect the page that it cloned. So I'm going to click this element and think, mm, I don't need this. There's two ways I could delete this. I could just use the backspace button on my keyboard, a Dell button if you guys have it. Um, or you can use a little, I think the Americans call it a trash can. I'd call it a bin um, up here. And it just deletes the one that you've selected. So I want the button still. I don't need the spam message. They know I'm not going to spam them. I don't need the message telling them to enter their details. And I'm going to change this text because like I said, they know. They know what they're getting from me. So rather than it being my spiel, I'm going to tell them what they need to do, which is And I go in and fix my obvious spelling mistake that I will always make. Cool. And this looks good, but this box is now unnecessarily large. I'm just going to pull up my download button a little bit and I'm going to pull up the box itself. Use this as a container to move all of these. And yeah, this is kind of what more what I was looking for, right? Um, it looks so similar to my last page and I've just built a thank you page without really having to do too much. I'm going to click in the container, the panel container. You can see the pink snap lines. I'm just going to do some alignment because they're a bit out of whack. I'm just going to distribute them. Yeah. Pull this up a bit. 
cool. They're all centered. They're all where I want them to be. So those alignment tools are something that I will just use over and over again. I don't think that's the last of them that you're going to see in this um in this webinar. So the only thing now that is left to do is make this button into one that does actually deliver this this guide that I'm giving out. It's not a submit button, it's a download button. To edit this, I'm going to go to element properties. I'm going to go to button settings. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to click here. That's not spell you spell here. Click here to download. Very, very clear what they need to do. This is how you get what you signed on for. So as I said, we need to change the mode. Any button that you add to the page will automatically be set to sign up because submitting a form is kind of the most common thing that um, buttons do inside of Convertry. But we want it to be a download button instead so that rather when when someone clicks on it that they sign up, they download my item. So I'll change it to download and a little thing will pop up here basically saying, well, what do you want them to get when they download? I'm going to open this up using the little kind of open file selector. And I have a I have my guide ready for you guys. Um, this was just like the image upload. You can either click here and search through your your like computer or you can, if you have it on your desktop, literally drag it on, which is what I think I did for this one. And this is done by domain. So these are all the domains that I have inside my account. And each one of them can have lots of different files attached to them. Ordering them by domain kind of just means that you keep like all the things from like one site together. So that's where that's done. You'll see a little message at the bottom here that says individual files are limited to 40 megabytes. So we can't hold or deliver any file that's bigger than 40 megabytes, but that's quite a big file. Um, that's not going to be an issue for most users, but some people will do like large file delivery. They'll actively sell this on our account. So there's no, David has asked, what's the total limit? There's no total limit. Just any one that you do upload has to be 40 megabytes or below because we can't physically deliver it. So there's no total limit. I'm not going to say you can only have 80, but you can't have more than 40, if that makes sense. So you've got this file and if your file was bigger than 40 megabytes, that doesn't mean you can't use Convertry. That doesn't mean, oh, you're clicking off the webinar, you're leaving. It just means that you need to host this file elsewhere and then you're going to pop a link in instead. So I use Amazon S3. If this ever happens to me, it's really, really cheap. Um, they do like video hosting and everything's rolled in. So we've got how to for that in our knowledge base. But this is an issue, as I said, that very few people will experience. So I'm happy with this file. I'm going to click top tips and then I'm going to click select. This has now uploaded. I'm very happy. If I was using one of those files was over 40 megabytes, this is where I would paste in like the shareable URL. Like you'll get if you watch one of our how to's, you'll see that there is a, and how, uh, like a shareable link generated by these um, online storage providers and you just put the link in there and it will do exactly what it would have done as if it was uploaded with us. There's also a force download on click toggle and like many of the things I've done so far, it's personal preference, this force on download, it means if I leave it off, it means that they click on it and the file opens, but if they close it, it's not saved to their computer. Force download on click is the moment that they click that click here to download, it's in their computer. So in this case, it's a free guide. So I can't be sure that they want me to just throw it into their computer. So I'm not going to do it. But if they had, for instance, just paid you five pounds to get hold of this guide, it's unlikely that they're just going to close it and never want to download it. So situation based. But I'm going to leave that off for now. And this thank you page, I didn't want it to be loads and loads of thrill frills. This is exactly what I wanted. I'm just going to check how mobile is looking. Yep. It's looking pretty good. I might make the header a bit smaller, tuck it to the top, but all in all, pretty happy with that. And so I'm ready to make this thank you page go live. That means it will be live on the internet for all the lovely people to see. This is important. You can't set up your form with a thank you page unless the thank you page is live. So that's why we've not published the other page. We've come out, made this thank you page. We're going to publish it and then we'll go back and publish the other one. Because you, when we are telling Convertry, go to the thank you page, we need to have somewhere to tell it. We need to have a URL. 
So to get this live on the internet so the world can see my creation, I'm going to click publish in the top hand toolbar. And this is the domain that my funnel is registered to. And then I have to pick a path to go after this. So it fills in there for you like that. So I'm going to call this webinar lead page. Obviously, you could if you had a home page that was just a domain. So if you just had honorspetshop.com, you don't have to put anything as the path. You could have your home page as honorspetshop.com. But just like any page on the Internet, you can't have two live pages both registered to the same URL. Every single page has its own individual one so it's quite likely you'll end up with paths like home thank you page like i have oh i've put lead page and i need thank you page so you'll yeah you'll end up with a few um but obviously that your user is going to see this so if you want your user to see like random numbers that's fine but this is the url that you'll be giving out i'm going to click publish and just like that, I am live. So I can click view page. And I know this is published before. This was like a little gray box and it said not published. Now it's green and it says view page. And if I click on it, it shows me my guide. If I clicked here, it would download the um, guide for me. So I'm happy with that. If you remember right at the start, I talked about using a really high quality image. Well, you may have noticed just then that my thank you page opened just like that. It wasn't slow. The huge image didn't slow it down so don't be afraid to pop those high quality images on their guide guys that is what convertry is built for well i want people to start seeing this thank you page so it's time to link it up to that home page and link up my autoresponder so i'm going to click x and go back to my funnel you can see this little green tick here because we are live that page has been published so before I go back to this one, uh, there is one little thing that I'm going to do quickly, which is going to save me time in just a second. And that is making use of this arrow feature. If I hold this down and drag it, I can point an arrow wherever I want inside my funnel. And I'm going to point it to my thank you page. So my lead page is going to go to my thank you page. I'm basically saying to Convertry, this is where I want the users to move along in my funnel. I can have multiple arrows going to different places. That's fine. Um, it's just telling Convertry and also for me, it's telling myself, like if you've got a couple of projects on the go, you might, you might forget, you might say, God, there's, there's four different pages that this could go to. And I don't actually know which one I'm linking up to. Oh, but I have all these arrows. So they are a visual enactment of what's going on in your funnel, but they also give Convertry nudge, nudge, wink, wink. This is the route my funnel is taking. So I'm going to go back into the edit page of the lead page because it's time to get my form linked up. When I'm collecting these people's information, I need to store it somewhere. And that is with my autoresponder of choice, which in this case will be MailChimp. But as you guys all know, if you've had a bit of a nose around, we integrate with a lot of autoresponders. MailChimp is just the one I like. So that's who I will be using today. So I'm ready to have a place to put all of these names and email addresses. So I'm going to go to forms in the top hand toolbar and there'll be a couple of options, but we want autoresponders, like I just said. All of those autoresponders that we can offer you are here and I'm going to click MailChimp. They're first and foremost and they are the one I use predominantly. And then it will ask me for a list. So inside your MailChimp account, you'll probably have a couple lists. This is... So David, you've asked a question about the MailChimp tags not showing up. That can be like for a number of reasons. I'd recommend after this is done, I'll drop support's email address in the chat at the end. Just send an email over to support. I'm working support today, so you'll probably get me. Um, the, the rule of thumb is I will answer any of you guys' questions, but if it's like an individual issue, it's going to be so much easier for you if I just look at your page because who knows, right? So I'll totally take a look at that, David, if you email us. I will drop support's email in the chat now. And that kind of goes for any queries you guys have. Like there's no stupid questions. There's no, oh, this is this is a thing I don't understand, but I'm just going to let it happen. Always email support. We are friendly. We love a chat and we love making sure that you guys can use Convertry to its full extent. So that is our email address. And that is going to make sure you did not disrupt my flow, David. Don't worry. Questions are appreciated. It means that people are listening. <laughs> so. I was talking about lists. So um, lists are a way to segment your followers. My 
example that I always give is if I owned a pet shop, maybe in the future I will. And I had a couple different pages, one that just told you all about the amazing cat products that I sold and one that told you all about the amazing dog products I showed. I would want these in people who sign up and say, yeah, tell me about the cat products. I want them to go in separate lists. Otherwise, when I send out an email, all of the cat stuff is going to go to the dog people and they're going to think, why did I sign up for your list? So if you even got like a vague bit of segmentation going on, you will need those different lists. You might just have one, especially when you're starting out, you just have a master list and you'll say everyone who signs up goes on this list. But as time goes on and you make more of these in MailChimp, they'll come up in your drop down. So I only have one and it's my pet shop example. So I'm going to click it and up will pop this funny scary looking screen um this is the scariest thing that we'll tackle in the webinar so don't worry we are going to go through it so these boxes here are just making sure that everything is mapped correctly it's called configuring your form fields which is a fancy way of saying everything is labeled correctly so you have fixed fields you can't change these this is mailchimp saying if there is an email box, it will, I will tell you that that's an email. It is always an email. But with these, it's a little bit more unsure. And you need to make sure that these are all allocated correctly. Because if I was collecting someone's phone number and this just looked like that with the none, like it does for birthday, it won't pass the information on. And that is one of the main issues that we have. People email us and say, I swear it's working correctly. I'm not getting the info. It's the form field configuration. It's annoying, but it's gotta be done. Um, this screen will always look a little bit different depending on your autoresponder, like your fixed fields. They might have name um, as a fixed field as well. This is just the way the MailChimp one looks. So if you wanted to make sure that this was configured, you would go to that drop down and find the one that best suited it. So you can see phone number is phone, like they won't be, they might not be identical, but you can all understand that phone number is phone, right? So make sure that those are all looking right. I'm not collecting birthday information, so I'm going to leave it blank. But if I wanted to in the future, I'd need to go in and configure that. I'm going to click next. And this is where it asks me, where do you want to redirect your prospects? Which is a fancy way of saying, what's your thank you page? You don't have to have one. I could toggle this on and say, oh, when I submit the form, they just stay on the page. Um, but obviously that doesn't work for me in this scenario because I'm delivering them a document on the next page. They'd be really annoyed if they didn't actually get the document I'd promised them. It also can look a little bit like your form didn't submit because you're on the same page, like you didn't get taken anywhere. And it, the expectation is there'd be a little message that said like, thanks, I'll be in your inbox soon kind of thing. So you can opt to stay on page, but it's pretty common to have a thank you page. If I hadn't drawn this arrow, this box would have been empty. And then I would have been stuck trying to remember the URL of the thank you page that I made. But I drew, I, I drew the arrow and so Convertry has gone, oh, you told me that those pages link up. So voila, surely this is your thank you page. If I had driven like, um, if I'd drawn like seven arrows linking all of these up, these would all be here in the suggestions drop down. There would be a load of pages, but we, we're going pretty basic today with our funnel. It's just the one. and this completely eliminates human error for accidentally spelling that wrong. What if I would typed it in and I'd left that E off, for instance? Then I wouldn't have been able to redirect my users and I would have had a load of angry emails saying, you took my email address and you didn't give me blah, blah, blah. Let's not deal with the angry people. So this just eliminates your human error and you're set up. So once you're happy with that, click done. We're back to our page, but now we have this red tick. This red tick is convert you saying, you did what you needed to do. The form is set up. If you go through those steps and you don't have one of these, a step has probably been missed. So go back, maybe check our knowledge base to watch a like a video run through. There's examples of us doing this for like most autoresponders, the most commonly used ones. So we can do one exactly for your autoresponder. You just gotta make sure you've got that red tick. And now I know that my form is set up correctly and linking to my thank you page. I know that everything is doing it's meant to and I am ready to make my pages debut. I'm ready to push it out into the internet. I'm ready for people to enter their email addresses. So I'm gonna publish just like I did my thank you page. So I'm gonna click publish. This is my lead page. I'm gonna put a webinar lead page. The other one was webinar thank you page. Makes them a nice little set. So this is where people are gonna find my link and I'm gonna click publish. And my work that I have done, it is live. I'm gonna click view page. Yeah, 
I'm pretty happy with that. It looks enough like the demo page. I've not quite matched the sandy color there, but if you guys agree to ignore that, I will too. So my lead page is looking good and I'm actually gonna give you a live demo of what it would look like to be a user. So if I linked someone to this page, then I would ask them to enter their details. So I'm Honor. Honor. And I'm actually going to enter support um, email address that I sent you guys before. It is a very important email address. So that is going to get added to my, my mailing list. So supportconvertory.com. I'm going to click that download now button. Oh, it's sending my form. And I'm at my thank you page. And now if I click this, it would download that. We don't need to read through my guide today. So that's it, guys. It might have seemed scary at first but we have just built a lead page with a thank you page and we've essentially just built our first funnel so be feeling proud at this point because we have made it very very far so i'm going to move on in a second to editor tips and tricks in this little page there um but first does anyone have any questions so um anything about what i just said basically general questions at the end but anything about what i just did even vaguely related don't let me move on poke me so Neil has asked, how do I publish a domain name that I purchased from another domain name company? So I hope I'm saying Neil right. So you may have noticed that mine was honorwoodlywork.convertry.com. These are the domain names that you get free with Convertry. They are provided and you can just set them up, publish straight to them. But it's pretty common, right, that you would want to go out and talk to someone like, I think that's HostGator, GoDaddy, Namecheap, um, and you can... Go out from them, buy your name, your um, your domain name. So it doesn't have dot .convertry in it. So it'd be honestpetshop.com. If that name was available, I'd go and buy it. And Neil wants to know if I can publish to it. You certainly can. What you would need to do is add that custom um, domain to Convertry. If you, a better explanation of this is if you go to help.convertry.com and you type in custom domain, which is what this is, it's going to give you a full walkthrough of how to set that up. And then the publishing is exactly the same as it was with the page that we just did. So that domain will be in your account, just like a Convertry one. You can create funnels on it and you can publish to it. So this full walkthrough goes from buying the domain to setting up into Convertry to publishing a page on it. So I'd recommend taking a look at that at help.convertry.com because that is going to show you all that you need to know, Neil. So I've got a very good question actually from Tony. Can you add custom fields? And then based on the custom fields, can you redirect them to a specific page? So yes and no, you can add custom fields. I'm gonna go back into my lead page. Um, we have like a text input box and that would be for your custom fields. So form elements, text input. If I put this on my page, just give it a second to load and then it'll pop on the page. There we go, I've got two now. This is completely unconfigured at the moment i'm making a mess of it now it's completely unconfigured at the moment so if i went back to input properties and i went to form field settings there's no form field right so then you can make that custom it can be a variety of things or a query string um or notes for instance so that is how you add custom fields however you can't read tony's other half was that can he redirect to a different page based on what they put in no so there's a couple of ways to get around that for instance like if you want this click here if you want this click here with two separate buttons you can do that but in terms of filling out a page the thank you page has like and having a form set up the thank you page is one page you can't tailor it unfortunately so sorry to be a letdown on that one tony kind of custom fields but not for the other way so Armando, I hope I'm saying everyone's name right today. Um, can you cloak that long name to make it look nicer and shorter? Um, I see what you mean. I typed in a long old webinar lead page name. So I can, but that's not a service directly with Convertry. Um, if you asked in our Facebook group, which is the Convertry Clubhouse, that's where lots of other users hang out and they'll tell you how they do that. So it's not a service we provide, but a quick Google should hopefully, there's, I'm fairly sure there's free services that do that so that you could turn that into a much more kind of good looking link, if you will, yeah. So Tony's asked about Quizitri, um, which is our sister product, it's our quiz product. And I am only a sub member of Quizitri's 
support staff. I am a learner member. So I'm not too sure. I'm I'm not currently aware that you can direct um, different information other places, but the best thing to do would just be email support at quizitri.com. So rather than support convertry, support quizitri. And one of the far more experts in quizitri itself will let you know about that, Tony. But I, I want to say no, but I would check with them in case I am wrong. So Michael is using, I'll just give some preface because he sent me a long question. Um, six figure mentors and you've come to Convertry that way. Well, very welcome. Um, you can use whoever you want for your landing page, basically. Um, I don't know exactly what you're trying to achieve when you say link to six figure mentors for them to take over. Anything you create in Convertry, like six figure mentors, don't have any access to. Um, so if they've told you to create a site on their thing for them to have control over, I'd stick with them. But you can build landing pages with Convertry. You can build, as I've just done, like that is completely available to you. In terms of six figure mentors having control of that, that would be something you'd have to contact them about because we don't give them the same access I would have to your page because they don't work at Convertry. Um, <laughs> so they are a collaborator with us. So. I would say if you want them to do something and they've asked you to build a landing page, do it with them. But feel free to like import that into Convertry and have a play around with it because Convertry is a very, very great, a very, very great funnel builder. Cool. It's looking like we don't have any more questions on that section yet. I'll open up um, the floor for questions at the end as well. So if something pops into your mind, don't worry, there's still time. The next thing I want to do is our editor tips and tricks, and this is just going to maximize time in Convertry. It's a growing trend throughout this webinar that I like to be lazy. I want to clone things. I want things to align for me. I don't want to build it myself. I want a gorgeous page in half the time. So I'm going to click edit page and I'm going to go into this example page we have. This is one of Convertry's templates from, it's quite an older template actually from years gone past, and we're going to spruce it a bit. We're going to make it a bit more what I want it to be, because one of the most common things you're doing inside Convertry is add a template, but then there'll be something on the template that you won't like. This is how you get rid of it so that no one ever knows it was there. So I am on my page. I'm going to take a look at the template. Yeah, I like, I like. The one thing that I don't like is this menu section. My website isn't going to include a menu. I'm mysterious like that. And so I want to delete this whole section, but there feels like a couple of things in my way. One, I'm going to have to click on all these elements and delete them. And what if a stray one like ends up on my page and I don't notice and then people are like, what's that weird text? Why does it say the word muffin? Um, and the other thing is I'm going to have this huge gap on my page. Like what am I going to do? Put a massive photo in there? Well, I'm going to fix both of those issues. The first is deleting these all at once. So just as we talked about the containers with the, that have those form elements in, we use them to move as a group, to align as a group. It's the panel that's basically behind here. This has a panel behind it. And when I click on it, everything inside has the pink snap lines. And I could go in and delete these one by one, or I can just click the delete selected button. And they're gone. Gone forever. Well, until I click the undo button. Um, so don't worry if you delete something. Just click undo. It's back. So I'm happy with that that's gone, but like I said, this whole area is like white space. And I could move this all up, but then I'm gonna have to make sure these line up again. I'm gonna have to make sure my images line up again. Like there's quite a few elements underneath there that basically I can't be bothered. So I'm just gonna use our remove white space button and this will remove all of the space between the top of this panel element and it will just make it reach the next panel element, which is here. So there is panels throughout this page behind each sectioned group of this template. There is a completely clear panel. A lot of our templates are built like this because it makes building easier. So I'm going to click on this, the one that I want to tuck up to the top. And I'm going to use our remove white space above button. So if I scroll now, this has tucked to the next section. So no one would ever know that that menu was there. My page is now looking seamless and I didn't have to mess around with all the elements down here. So happy with that section. I'm going to keep scrolling. Um, if I decided later on 
oh, I've made a mistake. And I kind of want to put something in here. Maybe not that menu element, but maybe I do want to put a banner with some testimonials or some other gorgeous things about my coffee shop. I can move all of these elements down with one movement that doesn't involve me moving them one by one. So this is our first keyboard shortcut of our editor tips and tricks. And it's that if I hold down shift on my keyboard and then I hold down this element and drag it, everything underneath is going to move it. So if I create a big gap, it's not been forced over the top of this. It has tucked my whole web page down and the same goes for moving it back up. I can just hold down shift and tuck this back up and you can see that coming back up with it. So there is never a point where you where you think, oh, is like, is there an add white space button? No, because you can just add it yourself by creating the space between the two elements by shift dragging. So shift drag was our first keyboard shortcut. And we're going to use another one to make our lives even easier. And that is alt drag. So I'm going to imagine that I like these images so much. I want another copy of each of them on my page. And I could click on them and click the clone button, which admittedly doesn't take too much time, but there's even even quicker way of doing it. And that is by holding down alt and then dragging the image. So where the other one was shift drag, this is alt drag. So I click, I clicked on the image, I cl hold down alt and I dragged image, alt, drag. And just like that, I have duplicates of all of those images and I didn't have to sweat it too much. So this is great if you get the perfect element on your page, you want to scatter these about. Perfect. You've got them. Alt, drag it, put it where it wants, done, dusted, didn't have to think about it anymore. So these elements are good, but I just dragged them out and they're actually not perfectly aligned. And you may have noticed in this webinar, I'm aligning everything. So I could align these like one by one, like I said before, kind of drag them and think, oh, maybe they're in line. But sometimes I get tired eyes from the computer. I can't line everything up. Like I'm not a professional architect, for instance. Um, and so I can just use ConvertGee's alignment tools on these again. So to do this, I'm going to add a panel to the page. And I'm actually going to turn on element outlines. So that's in display and element outlines so that I can see the pink outlines of all my elements. So that even when I drag this panel over it, I can still see them. So I'm going to make sure that all of the edges of these are in. You may think, well, you've just covered up your images, on her. I know, I know, I'm getting there. So now this will act as a container so that I can make all these images line up. But in order to do that, my images need to be sat on top of it. And very clearly right now, they're sat behind it. So I'm going to click the panel and I'm going to click send backwards until each of my six images has tucked on top. Cool. At this point, if I wanted to do this and keep it on my page, I would go to the background editor and I would make this box completely see-through so that I can use as editing without any user ever knowing I did it. But for the sake of like being able to see what I'm doing in this scenario, I'm going to keep the box not opaque so that you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to click inside the box. And I'm going to go back to those alignment tools. I'm going to click the little arrow drop down and I'm going to think about how I want these tucked up. I think I want the middle aligned. I don't want them all to bunch in the center. I want them to be middle aligned. So that's looking good. But that woman is her image is tucked over the other image. So I'm going to go back to my arrow and I'm going to. I'm going to justify them horizontally. So now they are all on exactly the same level with exactly the same spacing. And I didn't have to think too much about it. So those alignment tools are your friends, guys. And using the panel to align a group is a really, really quick and easy way of doing things. And rather than kind of like, because you can hold these elements down, for instance, and hold down shift to select a selection of them. But if I want to do this multiple times, like constantly holding down shift is kind of tiring and annoying and I might miss an element. The panel means I never miss an element. It's always there. It's always there if I need it. So now we're going to move on to how these panels can help us with mobilization. I'm going to go to the mobile screen of this page and I'm going to go to the top. It's looking good. I'm going to I made some changes, so I'm going to click remobilize all just so it like thinks about my changes, make sure it registers them. Yeah, so the white space is gone and all of that good stuff. Those images are aligned. But actually it tucked the text stuff all wrong. So this would be the description about bread. This would be the description about pastry. This would be the description about coffee. 
and it's not very clear now on my mobile page the way that it is on my desktop page and I could move this around like I said completely unaffected if I move this around my desktop will look exactly the same but it means that if I ever want to remobilize in the future I have to fix this every time which feels annoying but there is a workaround using panels so go back to your desktop view and have a look at the bit that's causing the issue the way that our mobile screen works is it reads your page like a book. It may seem like a very clever robot, but I like to think of it as a book reading robot. And what it does is it reads your page like a book. So it goes along the first line and it displays the, this one and then this one, because that's the first line. Then it displays this because it says that's the next line. And then it sees these three bread, pastry, coffee in a line and thinks, oh, they're in a line. They must all go next to each other with these bits as a line below. It's not to know that's not true. I'm not going to get angry at the remobilizer. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a panel behind this, which would be opaque. I'm not going to make it opaque, again, for clarity, but you guys could do, which means that I tell Convertry when, you're, when he's reading it like a book, oh, I've hit a whole element, that panel, and I'm going to display it as a whole. So I'm going to put that panel on the page. I'm going to make sure that this is contained, and then I'm going to send backwards and I'm going to do this three times. The pink snap lines of having the element outlines on just means that I definitely know I'm containing it because if I think I'm containing it and then I'm not, I'll be really annoyed when this doesn't work for me. Cool. So I've now got these and I don't even have to press anything in my mobile view it's automatically stacked these properly. It's fixed, it's reading it as it should. Convertry's happy, I'm happy. And in the future, it will always show like that. I'm gonna have another quick scan of my page and see, ah, these icons on the desktop view, they're all nice and landscape. And I want them to, to show that way on phone too and it's exactly the same issue as before convertry has read it and gone Oop, you're one thing sit on top Oop, you're one thing sit below but if i add a panel behind it it will say Oop, you're one whole thing i will work for you so i'm going to add the panel again just tuck it around my little icons send it backwards so they sit on top otherwise it won't work then i will go back to mobile and these are landscape perfection there is one small hitch with the mobilization and using panels, and that is that you are limited to 300 pixels. A panel can be any size, that's completely fine, but if you make your panel wider than 300 pixels, then it will stack these on top of one another again because it will say, oh, that's too wide to act as one whole panel. So panels will look fine, but this kind of mobilization trick won't work. So if I go back to the desktop, for instance, and I go element properties, and I go positioning, it will tell me that the width is 204 right now. I'm not close to 300. But if I made this 350, nice big chunky box there, I went back to mobile, they've stacked again. It's over 300 pixel, pixels and the mobile um, mobilizer is basically saying, the screen is smaller, I can't fit that in. So I'm gonna be forced to stack these on instead, which doesn't look terrible, but it's obviously not necessary in my scenario. So I can just pull this in, go back to mobile, voila. It is looking beautiful. So that is the end of my kind of extra tips and tricks for you guys. And we are nearing the end of today's webinar. While you guys are thinking of your all time convertry questions for me, I am just going to show you guys our two newest features for this week. So these came out this Tuesday and next Tuesday, there'll be more features because at convertry, we love new features. The first thing, which is our new feature, is that you can now split test two different pages rather than having an identical page. I'll show you what I mean. So split testing is when you have one page with the same URL, but actually there are two versions of this page that you split traffic between and you see which one converts better. So maybe the picture of the puppies converts better than the picture of the cookies. You won't know unless you split test it. And it's a great way of optimizing your pages and getting your conversions as high as possible. So I'm gonna go back to my campaigns dashboard and I'm gonna to go to, I had a little page ready. So to start a split test, I click the three dot menu and I click start a split test. It asks me if it's okay. 
And at this point, normally, you would have just had variant A and variant B looking the same. But now you can actually pick a completely different page to split test across this from. This was a real pain for our users before. They wanted to be able to compare two separate pages, but really they could only compare two pages that were similar. Well, now you can either choose to clone this and it would just have two of this, or I can click select a new page, click another page inside my funnel. And now that is my variant B and it's completely different looking. So that was new this week. The other thing that's new that I'm not going to go too much into because it's a bit technical is that URL parameters are now passing through forms and checkouts. So if you guys are using query strings or dynamic texts, these weren't passing through forms and checkouts. And now they are because people asked and we answered. So that is good news for anyone who uses those. But if those words went over your head, don't worry. If you're not using them, it doesn't apply to you. If you are, you're probably quite pleased. Cool, so that is the end of today's webinar. I am gonna recommend that you guys go to help.convertry.com and take a look at some of our help articles. There is so much in there. There is so much to see, so much to do, and it helps us on support. If you email us and say, I watched this how-to, but it's not working, because I know that you did watch the how-to. Otherwise, I'm gonna say, hey, did you watch this? Blah, blah, blah. This is just a goldmine of things for setting up forms, setting up checkouts, products, the whole shebang. I've got a question. So Tony's asked about doing a webinar on layers and custom actions with examples. So that's a really good idea, Tony. I will make I will make a mental note of that rather than boring you by writing it down. But we do look to do like different training webinars. If you go to the knowledge base and you go to training webinars, you'll see that there are a couple of things where we've done different ones that we did one about video recently as well. So Tony, I will pass that on because if a consumer has asked for it, it means it's in demand. And I will see if we can squeeze one in at some point on top of our weekly webinar. So that has been duly noted. Thank you. We, we appreciate knowing what you guys want, right? If not, what's the point? So you're very welcome. So any final leaving questions, don't be afraid. There's no such thing as a stupid question. And also, if you don't ask a question now and you think of one in 10 minutes, just email that address that I sent you, supportconvertu.com, and me or another very friendly member of my support team will answer anything you have at all. So no big, no question too big or small if you're getting started and you feel really overwhelmed, like we can set you up with some useful resources, et cetera, et cetera. Cool, guys. It's looking like we've reached the end. I think I've chatted away at you for long enough, and it seems that I've also answered all your questions for today. So there will be a recording of this, as I said, in our knowledge base very, very soon, if you guys want to go back and watch it again. But most importantly, thank you for coming. Um, always nice to have a chatty crowd like I've had today. And I hope that this has really cleared things up for you. And Hopefully I'll see you on the support desk or in the Facebook group, but in general, have fun using Convertry. All right, thanks for your thank you guys. Thanks so much.